questions. Questions are had. You don't have left the opposition. Mr. Prime Minister. This Prime Minister is just not worth the cost of housing, which has doubled. He promised to make it affordable more than eight years ago, and yet the cost has doubled. And now we're learning that in Montreal, rent has gone up by 14 percent after the inflationary spending that increased red tape. When will this Prime Minister follow my common sense plan to take taxes and red tape away to build affordable houses and apartments? The Honourable Government House Leader. It's nice to see the Leader of the Opposition show up for work today. I guess there wasn't a fundraiser that he could attend. bringing right-wing Republican tactics to try and shut down the government, Mr. Speaker. Canadians don't want the kind of chaos that they see in Washington. They want responsible leadership in Canada, and that's not what we witnessed from the Leader of the Opposition last week. On this side of the House, we will continue to stand up for Canadians and stand up to here, here. That's the way it is. Chef de l'Opposition. Mr. Président, le Premier ministre. Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister, the Bloc Québécois and their carbon tax are just not worth the cost for Quebecers. We've now learned that next year the average family will have to spend an additional $700 for food. And that's after the biggest increase in food prices for 40 years. That's the result of the tax that the Bloc Québécois wants to radically increase. Will the Prime Minister follow my common sense plan to axe taxes and inflationary spending so that Quebecers and Canadians can put food on the table? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker, on Thursday and Friday, the opposition leader asked his members to vote against security measures for Ukraine, to vote against funding women's shelters to vote against funding to vote against funding support for thalidomide victims does hurting vulnerable canadians make him feel stronger will he finally admit that his irresponsible choices have gone way too far the honorable leader of the opposition Mr. Speaker, last week we were proud to vote against more inflationary bureaucratic spending that does nothing spending were going to solve the problems, we wouldn't have two million people lined up at That's food right. banks and nine out of ten young people unable to afford a home. Now they want to quadruple the carbon tax, just as we learn that Canadians will be forced to spend another $700 just to feed themselves. Will they follow our common sense plan to ax the tax? Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Finance and Deputy Prime Minister of Canada. Mr. Speaker, last week the Conservatives voted against Operation Unifier, which is about direct military support for Ukraine. They've also voted against our free trade agreement with Ukraine. When we look at the extreme right south of the border parroting Putin's lines, we used to think that could never happen in Canada. But it is happening here, Mr. Speaker. On this side of the House, we are proud to say, Slava Ukraine. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. They spread fear and falsehoods about matters in other countries to distract people from the absolute misery they've caused here at home. We understand why they don't want to talk about how Canadians are living, because folks can't afford to feed themselves, lining up at food banks with the worst food price inflation in 40 years. And yet, the Prime Minister wants to quadruple the carbon tax with the help of his NDP junior coalition partners. Will the Prime Minister reverse his plan to quadruple the tax so Canadians can, can afford to eat, heat and house themselves? Yeah. The 
The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, it's interesting to see the opposition leader run from uncomfortable questions that are being put to him on the floor of the House of Commons. Let's look at some of the voting records that they demonstrated last week when it comes to saving people money on reducing the cost of housing. He's made clear his personal position is the government has no business investing in housing. Damn. But individual members of Parliament have the opportunity to stand up and be counted when there is a vote on the floor of the House of Commons. They said no to investments in affordable housing. They said no to thousands of apartments. They said no to housing for Indigenous communities, to emergency shelters for women and girls, and they said no to funding for homeless veterans. They should be ashamed, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. We said no to doubling housing costs. They doubled housing costs. Mr. Speaker, they doubled housing costs. That's the reality. Yeah. All the slogans that that member wants to spit out don't aren't worth a hill of beans when all they've done is double housing. Just like they said the carbon tax would help the environment, now we know Canada has fallen four places to 62nd out of 67 countries in the world after they've tried to impose this carbon tax. Instead of quadrupling a tax that has failed, why won't they ax the tax and invest in technology instead? The Honourable Government House Leader. On this side of the House, we are proud to stand up for Canadians. Mr. Speaker, last week what the Conservatives did is they voted consistently against measures that not only make life more affordable for Canadians, but help them in their time of need. 988 that was just launched with regards to suicide prevention. What did the Conservatives do? They voted against it. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to supporting victims of gender-based violence, what did the Conservatives do? The Honourable Member for La Prairie. C'est à l'ordre. L'Honourable Député de La Prairie. Order. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, this government is unbelievable. Every time we think that it can't get more incompetent, well, it says, just watch me. And they managed to do even worse. Until last Friday, the government of Quebec thought that it was agreeing that it was negotiating a dental care agreement with Ottawa. But no, Ottawa is trampling Quebec's jurisdiction and is picking more fights instead of coming to an agreement that could be in the interest of everyone. Doesn't Ottawa finally want to actually start doing some useful work? The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is not a matter of jurisdiction. This is a matter of health care. Today, throughout the country, dental care will be available for everyone throughout the country. This isn't just about justice, Mr. Speaker. It's a matter of prevention. It's a matter of health. Today represents a major improvement to our health care system. I am so proud of that. We will work with all provinces and territories to ensure that the system works. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, Quebec already has a dental care system. If we just had the money, we could have improved it, but that seems to be too complicated for this government. Quebec has a public system with the RAMQ, but instead of just improving it, Ottawa wants to bring Sun Life, a private company, into our public system. We thought that Ottawa wanted to make an agreement and respect jurisdiction, but they don't care. They just want good news for the holidays. Why try to create a regime that is incompatible with Quebec's system? The Honourable Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, we don't want to replace the existing systems in the provinces and territories. The idea is to help people who don't have dental care to make sure that everyone throughout the country can access dental care. This is not a matter of jurisdiction. It's a matter of justice. It's a matter of health care. It's a matter of ensuring that everyone in the country can live in dignity. Thanks to New Democrats, 9 million Canadians will have access to the dental care they deserve. Seniors.
seniors, children, people with disabilities will soon be able to go to the dentist yeah. without worrying about the cost. Because of the NDP, yeah. families will save thousands of dollars during an affordability crisis. Right. This is the biggest expansion of public health care yep. in half a century. Shamefully, yeah. last week the Conservatives again voted no to dental care and putting money back in people's pockets. Can the Minister explain the impact of the NDP dental plan on Canadians? The Honourable Minister of Health. In a time of great global difficulty, in a time where people all over the world are finding things hard, there are those that stand up and provide solutions and talk about how we make things better. And I want to recognize the NDP in stepping forward and talking about solutions, about talking about answers. When we saw the Conservatives voting against dental care, voting against support for seniors, voting against support for persons with disability, voting against our children who need dental support, shame on them, Mr. Speaker. And congratulations to any party that stands up for ideas and getting things done in this country. that members might have been a little bit tired today, but it seems like giving everybody a lot of energy. The Honourable Lenahab Dipté de Rosemont. The Honourable Member for Rosemont at Tibetri. Mr. Speaker, more and more people are struggling to pay the bills, and they can't pay to go to the dentist. The Liberals and Conservatives teamed up twice to vote against a dental care plan. Thanks to the NDP, seniors, children, and people with a disability will be able to access this essential care. The Conservative leader whose dental care has been paid for by taxpayers for 20 years, would like to cut that program. Apparently, what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. But the NDP will deliver the help that people need. Why did it take this Liberal government so long to deliver the goods on dental care? The Honourable Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, this is a huge step forward. Bringing dental care to everyone throughout the country. I appreciate very much the hard work of the NDP and the idea that any and every party here must work together to find solutions. They're not just here to criticize everything, but instead to work together to find solutions during a time that is difficult throughout the country. Mr. Speaker, this is a historic day for our health care system. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. The Prime Minister is causing division and anger in unprecedented ways with a backlash that we may never have seen in this country before. 133 First Nations suing this Prime Minister over the carbon tax. Several provinces taking the Prime Minister to court to try to stop the tax. One province refusing to collect the tax altogether. And now the Premier of the Northwest Territories asking for a full exemption, saying, quote, the prices are just getting higher and higher here. After eight years, it's clear the Prime Minister is not worth the cost. Will he put his ego aside and ax the tax? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, last week when the Conservatives had the chance to stand up for First Nations people, they voted against, against the measures that Indigenous communities need every single day to deliver things like clean water, Mr. Speaker, to de deliver things like education, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that infrastructure is kept running and maintained, Mr. Speaker. When they had a chance to stand up with First Nations, what did they do? They voted against them. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. We may have a chance to provide relief to all Canadians and First Nations. They say, we'll see you in court, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. They have succeeded, though, in uniting Canadians around one thing their hatred for the carbon tax. As hardworking Canadians across the country visit food banks for the first time or turn their thermostats down, Northerners are really facing the sting of the carbon tax. The Premier of the Northwest Territories went on to say, quote, I mean, ideally, a complete exemption for the territory is what we would hope for, because like I said before, the costs are already high. Why won't the Prime Minister have some mercy on Canadians and ax the tax? Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. 
Speaker, I think it's important that the Honourable Member stop misleading Canadians. Research coming out of the University of Calgary last week shows that their plan to make pollution free again will only benefit those earning over $250,000 a year and hurt almost everybody else. The Conservative leader says that he cares about affordability, but last week in the middle of the night they voted to cut affordable housing construction, cut school, school food programs, cut dental care for the most vulnerable, cut affordable child care. Shame! 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 Hey! The Honourable Member from Prince George, Peace River, Northern Rockies. In one of his first comments as Northwest Territories Premier, RJ Simpson simply said yesterday a carbon tax doesn't work for Northwest Territories. And a complete exemption for the territories is what we would hope for because, like I said before, the costs are already high. Higher costs are not the solution up here. Will the Prime Minister do the right thing this Christmas, fire this Environment Minister and axe the carbon tax? The Honourable Minister. Wildfires have ravaged um, our, our country. In the Northwest Territories, towns were almost burnt down. We had to evacuate the capital city of the Northwest Territories, Mr. Speaker. And what did the Conservatives do? They voted against the measures to fight against climate change. And they voted against the measures to support Canadians at their time of need as well. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Prince George Peace River, Northern Rockies. Mr. Speaker, that answer throws the current Premier of the Northwest Territories completely under the bus. Yeah. He unfairly gives a tax exemption to certain Canadians and not others. His environment minister has doubled down recently and said, you know, I'm going to give that exemption to some but not others. Liberal hot air won't keep Northern Northwest Territory residents warm this Christmas. Will the minister come to me, to the Northwest Territory, sit across from families in Northwest Territories and tell them why they won't exempt them from the carbon tax? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, climate change is having a devastating effect on northern communities. With the north, uh, with the north warming three times the rate as that of the south. Uh, we've seen some of the most devastating effects of climate change this last summer with uh, horrible, horrible wildfires all over Northwest Territories. Our government is focused on making ends meet for Northerners while at the same time battling climate change, while at the same time making sure that Northerners have what they need to live a, a good life. Here, here. The Honourable Member for Mégantique d'Érable. Well, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister of the Northern Territories wants to know why provinces that voted Liberal got a tax break, whereas the Northwest Territories have to pay, even though, according to the new Premier, prices are just going up and up. With these rising prices, Canadian families are going to have to choose between having a Christmas meal and heating their homes. When will this Prime Minister finally axe the tax on farmers and families? The Honourable Minister of Transport. Mr. Speaker, if I were a Quebec Conservative colleague, I would be ashamed to rise this morning. They voted against Quebec's dairy producers. They voted against funding for the Plains of Abraham. They voted against funding for the Magdalen Islands. They insulted Quebecers. I would be ashamed, very ashamed, to rise this morning. The Honourable Member for mégantique lérable well, Mr. Speaker, in a few days it will be Christmas. I, if I were a member of the Liberal cabinet, you know it would make me very, very ashamed. It would make me very ashamed to know that a child who on their Christmas list asked, to know that some children asked for a gift card in their list to Santa because that's what they want, to be able to eat a square meal at Christmas. That's embarrassing. That's shameful. When will the Liberals understand that their plan isn't working, that they just want to quadruple the carbon tax, which will make the situation worse for all Canadians and Quebecers, Mr. Speaker? The Honourable Minister, Mr. Speaker, this is a shocking claim when we know that the Conservatives are just trying to change the subject so they don't have to talk about what they did last week. It's shameful, and in fact, it's a betrayal towards Canadians. The fact that they voted against our measures, against food banks, against housing and women's shelters, against Ukraine, Mr. Speaker. Who's telling them what to do? I mean, their leader just seems to be taking direction from Donald Trump in the U.S., Mr. Speaker. 
The Honourable Member for Lac Saint Jean, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in, in politics, some files are pretty simple, so I have a simple question. The federal government owes Quebec $460 million for sheltering asylum seekers, but this is an area of federal responsibility. Last week, the Minister of Immigration met his Quebec counterpart. So, my question is simple. Is he going to pay the money back? The Honourable Minister of Immigration. Mr. Speaker, last week, I did indeed meet my counterpart, Minister Fréchette, on Friday. We had a good conversation. Of course, there are some issues we don't agree on, like we'd like Quebec to do more to support family reunification for Quebec families. But overall, it was a good conversation. We will continue. The ministers of finance will meet and, and talk about the issues in their area. But we all care deeply about welcoming immigrants appropriately. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint-Jean. Mr. Speaker, we don't need three months of working groups. This should have been a 30-second conversation. The minister just had to say three, thi three things. First of all, thank you, Quebec. Number two, who do I make the check out to? And in third, and third, where do I send the money? When will the money be paid back? The honorable minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, we'll be continuing the conversation, but I have to say it's not the Bloc Québécois that's going to find out what happened before everyone else. Rivière du Nord. The honorable member for Rivière du Nord. Well, Mr. Speaker, Quebecers are so sick of the monarchy. That's why on Friday, the National Assembly unanimously voted for a motion asking for the lieutenant governor position to be abolished. All officials, all MNEs from all parties want to replace that position by a democratic institution. Of course, here in this House, we wouldn't have a unanimous vote because we know that some Canadian MPs constantly dream about bowing down before Charles III. But for Quebecers, we all want to undertake a process of democratic modernization. So will this government finally hear reason and abolish the position of Lieutenant Governor of Quebec, the Honourable Minister of Transport? Mr. Speaker, I know that my colleague likes to fantasize about the monarchy and reopening the Constitution. But on this side of the House, we care more about actual issues that people care about, the rise in the cost of living, housing, and the conservative cuts. They want to make cuts in all sorts of unacceptable areas. They want to cut things that are so important for Quebec and for all Canadians. Shame on them, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Desnetti, Ms. Nippy, Churchill River. After eight long years, more and more Canadians are realizing that this Prime Minister is simply not worth the cost. Mr. Speaker, we can now add the Premier of Northwest Territories to the growing list of people who are asking this NDP Liberal government to listen to their concerns and axe the carbon tax. As the Christmas season arrives, this Prime Minister's gift of giving has been replaced by a gift of taking from families, farmers and First Nations. Will the Prime Minister finally cancel his plan to quadruple the carbon tax and stop his plan to ruin Christmas? The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Speaker, when this government came to power after 10 years of Harper and the member from Carleton, we were on track to see 12% increase in carbon emissions by 2030. Last week, we released the update on the emissions, uh, the emissions reduction plan, and it was a dramatic turnaround, Mr. Speaker. We will exceed the initial target of 30%, which we then raised to 40%. We will more than achieve the 2026 interim target, and we are on track to achieve the 40% target by 2030. Mr. Speaker, I am very pleased to say that our climate plan is working. Where is their climate plan? The Honourable Member from Desnetti, Mississippi, Churchill River. Mr. Speaker, this from a minister whose government spent three and a half times more responding to emergencies than supporting First Nations communities to prevent these emergencies. This NDP Liberal government refuses to listen. The newly elected AFN chief now lends her voice to the growing list of people who want to axe the carbon tax, which increases the cost of gas, groceries and home heating for all Canadians. Will the Prime Minister finally cancel his carbon tax so families, farmers and First Nations can afford a meal on Christmas Eve? Yeah, yeah. 
Honourable Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Last Thursday evening and Friday, the Conservative Party of Canada explained exactly where they were, how much they support farmers. In fact, they voted against farmers. I, the, the, the example of $337 million for the supply management program. Gone. Voted against it. Vitally important to the agricultural sector. I can assure the dairy farmers and chicken farmers and egg farmers in this country, we are and will continue to support them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Peace, sorry, Peace River Westlock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if the Liberals actually wanted to support farmers, they would axe the carbon tax. Yeah, After yeah. eight years of this Liberal Prime Minister, a turkey in northern Alberta costs eighty-two dollars. Why would this be? Perhaps it's the carbon tax. I talked to a turkey farmer in northern Alberta, and he says he is struggling to pay the carbon tax. Regardless of how expensive the turkey is in the grocery store, he's having to pay the carbon tax, and he is unable to make a living to put food on his own table. Will the Prime Minister quit his bah humbug approach to this Christmas, take off the carbon tax for families, farmers, and First Nations, so Canadians can all enjoy a turkey for Christmas? The Honourable Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I hope that turkey farmer looked at what the Conservative Party of Canada did last Thursday. That's right. And That's right. They continually right. vote against agriculture and farmers. We, on this side of the House, will make sure that we fully support agriculture and make sure that they, for example, they have voted against the funding for on-farm climate action. On-farm climate action will help the environment. Mr. Speaker, we have and will continue continue to support farmers and take care of the climate in this country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Vancouver East. Right here in Ottawa, the average rent for a one-bedroom has hit a record high of $2,100 a month. It's close to $3,000 in Vancouver and Toronto. It is unacceptable that the out-of-touch Liberals are delaying housing funding for another two years when people can afford rent now. Then there's the Conservatives who don't even believe in community housing and would rather give handouts to luxury condo developers. Will the Liberals stop delaying and get the money out the door now to build the much needed affordable housing? The Honourable Minister for Housing, Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, I thank my Honourable colleague for her question and for her advocacy for additional investments in affordable housing and housing more broadly. I would remind my Honourable colleague that in fact there are programs that exist today that are rolling dollars out the door to get more homes built. In fact, just a few weeks ago, we announced more than $4 billion worth of loans that's going to result in more than 12,000 new apartments being constructed. In addition, we recapitalized our affordable housing fund to the tune of a $1 billion in the fall economic statement on top of the more than $300 million going to cooperative housing, which will be rolling out early in the new year. I'm willing to work with all members of the House, including that member, to build more homes faster. The Honourable Member from London Fanshawe. The Kuta family are Palestinian Canadians from London currently stranded in Gaza. Ahmed Kuta is a nurse who has spent months caring for the wounded at one of Gaza's besieged hospitals. He is a hero. But he and his three brothers are being denied the right to exit Gaza and the minister refuses to explain why. Without a ceasefire, there are strong reasons to worry that the Kuta family may be killed within days if Canada doesn't act now. Mohamed Kuta asked, Is there hope or am I waiting for my death? When will Canada get the Kuta family out of Gaza? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Foreign Affairs. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank my colleague for having done so much work last week, voting 30 hours in support of the work that we're doing here, together. Here. Meanwhile, I completely understand how much the situation in Gaza is dire. It's one of the worst places in the world to live in. The Minister of Immigration and I are working actively to find a very compassionate approach when it comes to Canadians and their family, and we will get Canadians out of Gaza. I'm in close contact with my Israeli and Egyptian counterparts to make sure that the Gupta family can come back to Canada. Here, here. The Honourable Member from Davenport. Mr. Speaker, our federal government has always shown support for Ukraine as it defends itself against the illegal and unprovoked attack by Russia. In fact, this House, and indeed this country, has always been unanimous and steadfast in its support. 
Yet two weeks ago, Conservatives voted against the modernized Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement. And just last Friday, they voted against $500 million in additional aid to Ukraine. Can the Minister of Defence highlight the support that Canada has been providing to Ukraine in its fight against Russia's illegal invasion? The Minister for National Defence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the member from Davenport for a question, and sadly, she's right. Just last week, the Conservatives voted against funding for Canada's military operations. They voted against compensation improvements for CAF members. And they voted against military aid for Ukraine under Operation Unifier. Under Op Unifier, we're doing vital work, Mr. Speaker, including training nearly 40,000 Ukrainian troops and supplying Ukrainian forces with the munitions and equipment they need. Mr. Speaker, we will stand up for our troops. We will stand with our allies and partners. We will stand up for Ukraine, even if the Conservatives cut and run. Mr. Speaker, Hansen remembers. Stop Ukraine! The Honourable Member from Kenora. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost of Christmas dinner. His carbon tax are driving up the costs so high that Canadian households are struggling as we head into the holiday season. But what's worse is that he's planning to quadruple this tax on groceries, gas and home heating. Instead, Mr. Speaker, why doesn't the Prime Minister Access carbon tax so that Canadians can afford Christmas dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Honourable Minister for Families and Employment. Mr. Speaker, in a shocking turn of events just last week, the Conservative Party held hostage the progress and investments that we continue to make in Canadians. When given the chance to support increasing the number of childcare spaces in rural and underserved communities, what did they do, Mr. Speaker? What they simply don't understand is that their plan is just not working. And it's not just Conservatives saying it. The Chiefs of Ontario representing 133 First Nations, nearly a third of which that are located in the Kenora District, are taking this government to court, arguing that uh, the carbon tax leaves them worse off and breaches the principles of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So why doesn't this Prime Minister finally show some common sense and axe his tax on farmers, families and First Nations for good? Yay. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary is the Minister of the Environment. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives are always trying to cancel climate action, but last week the Grinch, I mean the leader of the Conservative Party, tried to cancel Christmas as well, but instead he cancelled... Just, just want... I'm going to ask the Honourable Member... Uh, I'm going to ask... As the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary knows, as all members know, that we are not supposed to refer to, uh, give mock names to, to members of Parliament. I'll ask the Honourable Member of uh, Parliament Secretary to this rephrase the question, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Conservatives are always trying to cancel climate action, but last week the leader of the Conservatives tried to cancel Christmas too, but instead he just cancelled his credibility. Mr. Speaker, last week the Conservatives voted against the GST taking off. Psychotherapy and counselling. Mr. Speaker, last week the Conservatives voted against seniors getting their teeth fixed. When will he admit that his reckless plan is putting Canadians at risk? The Honourable Member from Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes. Speaker, 133 chiefs from across Ontario are calling out this government's unjust carbon tax as driving up the cost of everything for First Nations communities. What is typically a festive time for many, Indigenous families are wondering how they are going to pay the cost of food. The Prime Minister's quadrupling of the carbon tax is driving up the cost on farmers and truckers, which rises the cost of food. So will this Prime Minister finally cancel his plan to quadruple the carbon tax on families, First Nations and farmers forever? The Honourable Minister for Justice and Attorney General of Canada. Mr. Speaker, today I've heard a lot about rising costs. I just want to make sure Canadians that are watching appreciate that when you vote for 30 hours and it costs about $70,000 an hour to keep this place running, you're costing Canadian taxpayers about $2 million. First point. Secondly, with respect to the point that was just made by the member opposite, if they were so concerned about the price of food, I would have thought that they might have voted in favour of a school food program to keep food prices down. Member 
from Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. Again, Speaker, after eight long years of this Liberal NDP government, the quality of life has not improved for Indigenous peoples. Now, 133 First Nations in Ontario are taking this government to court over the carbon tax, stating that the climate can't be helped at the expense of communities. The Prime Minister Speaker is making life harder for everyone by raising the cost of food through his carbon tax, so Conservatives will delay this Prime Minister's vacation until he removes it. Will the Prime Minister finally cancel his carbon tax so Indigenous families can share a meal with friends and family on Christmas? The Honourable Minister for, Ab for Aboriginal Services. Conservatives had wanted to make life easier for First Nations people. They wouldn't have fought. Uh, they wouldn't have voted against so many measures that First Nations leaders need and are essential to running good communities. Things like education, Mr. Speaker. Things like emergency management, Mr. Speaker. Things like water infrastructure and the building of homes, Mr. Speaker. These are the kinds of things that Conservatives voted against last week. They've never been there for Indigenous people, and they continue to vote against them. La COP se conclura demain. COP will end tomorrow in failure with a final statement that glosses over the importance of eliminating fossil fuels. Canada blames OPEC countries, but the Liberals just announced a plan to cap greenhouse gas emissions for oil companies that won't apply until 2030. Nothing before 2030. If we haven't cut emissions by 60 percent by then, global warming will smash the Paris Accord targets. Do the Liberals realize that their COP record is no better than that of petro-monarchies? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Canada participated in COP20 to show that we are determined to move the low-carbon economy forward. We have a plan to reduce oil and gas sector emissions. This sector is making a significant contribution to reaching the targets in the country. Thank you. It's time to take stock of COP, but also of the whole year. When Quebecers look back on this year, they'll think back to the forest fires that turned Quebec's skies into a dystopian movie set. They'll think of torrential rains that scuttled summer vacations, ruined harvests, and caused rivers to burst their banks. Quebecers won't be thinking about COP, but they'll be really thinking about climate change. That's how we measure the success or failure of governments and COP meetings. Do the Liberals realize that they're ending the year yet again with a failing grade? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment. Speaker, and I'd like to take the opportunity to once again say that Canada was the first nation ever to put a cap on oil and gas emissions at this COP28, Mr. Speaker. That comes in the exact same week as Canada was the first country ever to suggest that we were going to reduce our methane oil and gas emissions by 75 percent, Mr. Speaker. That is leadership in climate action, Mr. Speaker. I welcome the questions from the Bloc and the NDP about how we fight climate change because the questions from the Conservatives are so consistently whether or not we fight climate change. Mr. Speaker, the answer is yes. We rise to the challenge and we are climate action leaders here in Canada. Yeah, yeah. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint-Laurent. Let's talk about Canadian leadership on the world stage when it comes to the environment. COP28 is happening now. I'm participating virtually. What does that mean? I'm attending regularly with zero emissions and zero costs. Last year, at COP27, a document was tabled about the effectiveness of the fight against climate change. Canada was ranked 58th. Could a minister tell us where Canada stands a year later? The Honourable Minister. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le ministre de l'Environnement fait un travail The Minister of the Environment is doing extraordinary work. Many questions were raised by the opposition. One thing they don't seem to understand, however, is that in we had a battle of the Plains of Abraham in 1759. We had another one last week during the marathon voting session. Conservatives voted against all measures. Will they perhaps uh, be shy about visiting the Plains of Abraham in the coming weeks? The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. I understand the Minister for being a little embarrassed because Canada went from 58 to 62. Those are the results after a year of this government's efforts. After eight years, what's happened? 
eight years of important messages, but never reaching messages, reaching those objectives. In 2015, Canada is back, the Prime Minister, yeah. but today the Canada is way, way back. <laughs> That's the reality of the eight years of this government. Order. The Honorable Minister for Innovation. Inaudible. Last week, Conservatives voted against aerospace initiatives and tourism businesses. They voted against the Plains of Abraham. Imagine that. The member for Celeron should be ashamed for voting against the planes. He needs to bring his colleagues back to reason, because on this side, we are fighting for Canadians. The Honourable Member from Regina, Wiscana. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal NDP government, even a report from COP28 is showing that this Prime Minister is not worth the cost. The Climate Change Performance Index ranked Canada 62nd out of 67 countries on climate change performance, despite the fact that Canada has one of the highest carbon taxes in the world. Mr. Speaker, will the F Prime Minister finally admit that he does not have an environmental plan, he has a tax plan? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources and Energy. Mr. Speaker, not only is the Conservative Party opposed to addressing affordability in this country, but they, and not only are they opposed to fighting climate change, but they have a hard time keeping their, their statements straight. Mr. Speaker, in 2008, the Conservative Party platform stated we will work to implement a North America-wide cap-and-trade system for greenhouse gases. The 2021 platform, on which all of these members were elected, stated we recognize that the most efficient way to reduce our emissions is to use pricing mechanisms. Mechanisms. And more recently, Mr. Speaker, the member from Pitt Middles, Maple Ridge, who made a, 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 a question here about carbon pricing, sat in Premier Campbell's caucus and voted in favor. The Honourable Member from Guelph. Mr. Speaker, housing is too expensive everywhere. To solve the housing crisis, we need to get more homes built faster. And you simply can't get more homes built by cutting housing funding. My question is for the Minister of Housing, Infrastructure and Commun Communities. How will the housing measures included in the supplementary estimates, which the Conservative leader just voted to cut, help solve the housing crisis? Great question. The Honourable Minister for Housing, I Infrastructure and Communities. Mr. Speaker, we know over the course of our history that we have to make investments if we're going to solve the national housing crisis. But the Conservative position to cut everything, Canadians are right to ask, what is it they're going to cut? Thankfully, they put on full display a series of measures that they want to get rid of. This includes investments that we're going to build thousands of affordable homes for Canadians. This includes investments that they want to cut that are building apartments at reasonable prices. This includes investment in Indigenous housing initiatives, investments in transition homes for women and children children and investments in homelessness support for veterans, Mr. Speaker. If Conservatives can't stand along the vulnerable, they will stand with no one but themselves. The Honourable Member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Canada's Ethics Commissioner has launched an investigation into a second Liberal appointed member at their billion dollar green slush fund. Two Liberal appointees together have funneled more than $600,000 to their own companies. It's clear this Prime Minister isn't worth the cost to struggling Canadians. And though the NDP Liberal government tried to silence the whistleblower, the whistleblower will be testifying at committee tonight. So can the Prime Minister cut the drama and so we don't have to wait to this evening and tell Canadians how many other Liberal insiders got rich? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, in fact, let's cut the drama, Mr. Speaker. These Conservatives are so against climate change, Mr. Speaker, that they want to cut one of the institutions that has fine and clean technology in this country, Mr. Speaker. The moment we learned about the allegation, we launched an investigation. We took remedial action. The chair of the board has resigned. The CEO has resigned, Mr. Speaker. We're going to get to the bottom of this, restore confidence, have governance, and continue to fund clean tech in this
this country. The Honourable Member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Vito Lakes. These Liberals and that Minister were satisfied with their cover-up report and wanted the Board Chair and their CEO to implement the recommendations at this corrupt organization. But now with the Auditor General investigating and the Ethics Commissioner investigating, two Liberal appointees, the Board Chair and the CEO, have resigned in disgrace. There's $1 billion on the line and we know that up to $150 million has been embezzled. Canadians can't afford this Prime Minister after eight years of him and his NDP Liberal government. We want to know, it's very easy, who got rich? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. You know, Mr. Speaker, what Canadians cannot stand anymore, those watching at home, is these Conservatives making stories and allegations, Mr. Speaker. That's what Canadians at home cannot stand anymore. That's they right. saw last week what they're able to do. Let me get the facts straight, Mr. Speaker. The moment we learn about the allegation, we took action. And by the way, the chair that is referring serve under Conservative government, Mr. Speaker. That's right. Let's not focus on people, Mr. Speaker. Let's focus on restoring governance, funding Clinton in this country. We'll get to the bottom of this and restore confidence in this institution. Good answer. L'honorable député de Lévis-Lopinière. Monsieur le Président, Mr. Speaker, after eight years of this Liberal government, the Prime Minister's cronies are using Canada's Green Fund to give themselves gifts. The director of the Billion Dollar Green Fund is currently under investigation for approving $400,000 to a business they own. When and how will the government recover taxpayers' money paid out by the Green Fund to the Prime Minister's friends and stop giving gifts paid for by Canadians? The Honourable Minister for Innovation. Mr. Speaker, I thank my colleague for his question and the theatrical performance. Now, when it comes to the facts, I think that Canadians understand that as soon as we heard there were allegations, we launched an investigation. The president of the board resigned and there was another resignation. We are acting. We're going to restore governance. And we will fund businesses in Canada that will put forward green to technology to fight climate change. That's responsible. No, no, sorry, the Honourable Member from Markham Stouffville. Mr. Speaker, our government has made it clear that dental care coverage is a priority. But in this House last week, the Conservatives were the only party to vote against funding for the Canada Dental Care Plan. Instead, the Conservatives want Canadians to pay for their care out of pocket. Today, the Minister of Health announced the next steps of our work to provide a historic dental care program in this country. Can he tell Canadians what this means for them? Good question. The Honourable Minister for Health. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, on Thursday and Friday, we got to see what the Conservatives haven't been willing to show, which is that in a time of global difficulty, when people all over the world are suffering, their solution here in Canada is to cut. Cut from the services and supports that Canadians desperately need. And what does that mean in dental care? It means for seniors that I've been talking to for decades who haven't been able to get their dentures, they voted against them getting their dentures and having that dignity. They voted against preventative health care that makes sure that people don't get cardiovascular disease or diabetes or that they have to go to an emergency room because they put off that critical care. Mr. Speaker, we're delivering dental care for this country along with the NDP. The Honourable Member from North Island, Powell River. Mr. Speaker, the delay and disappoint Liberals are letting veterans and their families down yet again. This time it's because they failed to eliminate the marriage after 60 clause that puts veteran spouses, mostly elderly women, into poverty. When I asked the Minister of Defence what's happened with the $150 million the Liberals promised for a Veteran Survivors Fund, after four years, he couldn't give me an answer. Our veterans and their families deserve better. So I'm asking the minister again, are any of the veterans' families receiving the promised survivor's benefit? Here, here. Here, here.
The Honourable Minister for Veterans. Speaker, and I want to thank my colleague for her continued advocacy on this matter. When a person or a family member serves, uh, when a veteran serves in the military, their family serves with them. Our government is extremely sensitive to the situation of widow spouses of veterans who married after the age of 60. In Budget 2019, we announced an amount of money to make sure that we put in place a program, and I'm looking forward to making sure that that program rolls out in the very near future. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Kitchener Centre. Mr. Speaker, following the, the uh, disability community's disappointment that not a cent was set aside for the Canada Disability Benefit in the fall economic statement, stakeholders are now sharing that the Department of Finance is considering determining eligibility through the incredibly burdensome application for the disability tax credit. This flies in the face of an amendment I proposed and was supported by all colleagues requiring the benefit be barrier-free. Will the minister confirm they will find a barrier-free application process as prescribed by law? You're here. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for his question and for his active participation for voting for investments like the administration of Canada Disability, Disability Benefit while the Conservative members voted against it last week. Mr. Speaker, wow. as I mentioned in the committee earlier today, that getting the CDB out as quickly as possible and getting it right is our top priority. Mr. Speaker, we're doing it by extensively consulting with the disability community in the true spirit of nothing without us. In fact, Mr. Speaker, online, public, fully accessible consultations are open, and I hope that all members and all Canadians with disabilities will participate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And that brings to the end of question period. Je vois que y a un député. Le dé I see the member for Louis Saint Laurent is rising on a point of order.